morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this worship service. My name is Jane McDonald. It is good to be here to praise God, to hear God's holy word, to reconnect with brothers and sisters in Christ, and be renewed and energized for our work as disciples of Jesus. Welcome also to those worshiping with us on our YouTube channel. I'm pleased to welcome today the Reverend Mike Atzer. Reverend Atzer is a hospice chaplain with Genteva Hospice. After serving as pastor of Kirkpatrick Memorial Presbyterian Church in Ringo's for eight years and First Presbyterian Church of Blackwood, New Jersey for 10 years, Mike graduated from Princeton Theological Seminary in 2003 and was ordained by the Newcastle Presbytery in Delaware. Mike has been married to Amy for 31 years. They have two daughters, a son-in-law, a future son-in-law, and a rescue dog named Augie. His wife, Amy, is a librarian with the Somerset County Library System. In his spare time, Mike enjoys reading, spending time with his family, and researching his family tree. Many of his ancestors were from the area within the Presbytery here, and so you may be related to some people here. <laughs> But thank you for being with us this morning, and we, we will have a good worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. to God's name, that all the nations bow down to worship God. God is ruler over all creation. God reigns over earth and the farthest ends. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over all. Listen to hear God's mighty voice. This sanctuary is filled with God's presence. Here we receive power and strength from God. Here we pray together for God's guidance. The Holy Spirit empowers us to witness. God draws us together as one people. We can experience eternity in the midst of time. Please join me in singing hymn number 461. God is here, found in this morning's worship God.
have promised our loyalty to Jesus Christ, pause now to examine our faithfulness to the way he showed us. We who have been gifted with the Holy Spirit within and among us, ask ourselves whether others can see that gift in us. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession found in your worship guide. It is followed by a time for silent prayer. O oh God, if we suffer, it is usually not because of the Lord of Jesus Christ. When we are glad and shout out for joy, it is seldom because we want to celebrate your presence with us. We even forget to say thank you when, with the heart of our strength you give us, we accomplish some cherished goal. Our lives are not focused on realizing your rule of love on earth as in heaven. O oh God, receive our confession and help us to discipline ourselves in caring discipleship. Just be joyful. The God of all grace cares about you and wants the very best for you in company with all of God's children. God restores, supports, and strengthens you. And the good news for us is this. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Please rise and body her clear to join in singing with glory of God. to invite our children to come forward for our time together. And if you are worshiping with us virtually and you have children in your home, make sure they're close to the screen for our time together. Come on down. Well, <laughs> wow. that was one of the 
one of the most interesting entrances I've seen. Have a seat right here, okay? Great. Very good. Thank you so much for coming down here today. Um, I'm Mrs. Duffy, and welcome, all God's children, to our time with children. So, I have a question for you. Are any of you into, are any of you superhero fans? Any of you superhero? Oh, I see hands going up all over the place. That's really great. Um, who's your favorite superhero? Iron Man. Iron Man. And what's Iron Man's like, special power? He can fly like Superman. He can fly like Superman, right? Uh, Samuel, what is your favorite superhero? Black Panther. Black Panther. And what's Black Panther's superpower? He can move fast. Yeah, and he can fly like only one Spider-Man. Oh, okay. All right, that's a lot. I see you two are very well versed in superheroes, right? <laughs> you can tell who I am today. Wonder, Wonder Woman. I am Wonder Woman, right? Wonder Woman. Yeah, you're wearing your shirt. I am, and I have a cape. <laughs> I have a Wonder Woman cape, and I. Yeah, we can, and you have the crown. Right, and I have her. Right, right. What does this thing do? It, it makes people tell the truth? Yeah. Is that what it does? Yeah. I, I think so. Or is it the sword? No, I think it's this that makes people tell the truth. And I know she wears these gold wristbands, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They deflect things. Yeah, but so we don't have them. We just don't have Yeah, yeah. She's pretty them. amazing. Um, don't have but I don't have my wristbands on. I left them home, so I <laughs> I'll wear them next time, okay? All right, um, so what exactly is it that superheroes do? What do they do? They save the world. They save the world, right. They save people. They fight super villains. Fight Joker. Like the Joker? Yeah, yeah. like a uh, Lego bad guy. And you guys know all the superheroes, don't you? And who they fight. Yeah, I got Superman and Lego bad guy. Now, I have a question for you. Now... What do you think, all right, what do you think normal people like us without superpowers would do um, if we were in a superhero story and the superhero didn't show up? What would you do? Fight. Would we fight? Would we, we would just sit there and do nothing, right? My dad would fight. Oh, your dad. He's kind of like a superhero. <laughs> You fight against the bad, right? You fight for good. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I'm talking about superheroes today because I kind of think that Jesus' disciples treated him somewhat like a superhero. I mean, let's face it, he did a lot of really amazing things, right? I mean, he fed people that were hungry. Remember that story where he fed 5,000 people with just two fish and five loaves of bread? That's crazy. That's an amazing power, don't you think? Mm. And he healed people, right? People who couldn't see. Jesus gave them sight. People who couldn't walk. Oh. Jesus had them walk again. Oh. Jesus is God. Oh. Mm. But he also did things like teach people. He taught people, right? Yeah. But I think the disciples kept looking at Jesus to figure things out and to help them fix things that went wrong. In today's Bible story, we hear that Jesus. In our Bible story today, which we're going to hear in a minute, we hear that Jesus has to leave his disciples. Do you know where he goes? No. He ascends. He ascends, which means to go up. He goes up into heaven to be with God, which means. The disciples no longer have Jesus around to do the things for them anymore, like feed people who are hungry, all those things that Jesus did, and heal people, and teach people all about God and God's love. Now, at first, this might seem like it's kind of mean, or really, and definitely really sad for the disciples, for Jesus to leave them, right? I mean, he had been their teacher for three years. What in the world were they ever going to do without him? No, but I think there was a reason for Jesus leaving his disciples. And I think it was so that they wouldn't keep waiting for him 
to fix everything for them, or to take care of the people in need, to heal people and to feed people and to solve their problems for them. With Jesus leaving and going to heaven with God, then the disciples were able to learn their final lesson. And it was that with God's help, the disciples can do and did do exactly what Jesus did. Now that Jesus wasn't there to do things for them. And so the, Jesus, so the disciples got sent out and the disciples taught people about God and God's amazing love. And the disciples fed people and the disciples healed people. And you know how they learned to do it? No, no. By listening to Jesus. Jesus is the one who taught the disciples how to pray. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the, is the one who taught the disciples to keep their attention on God all the time. And Jesus is the one that gave them the Holy Spirit. He's God with us. Mm -hmm. And guess what? With that, they, they learned how to do all the things that Jesus did. And you know what? We can do that too. We can learn to do the same things that the disciples learned from Jesus. We do that by reading stories about Jesus in our Bible. And we do that about practicing the same things that we saw Jesus teaching his disciples in those stories. Like teaching people about God's love and showing God's love to people and loving one another. When we do these things, we're learning how Jesus, from Jesus, how to be God's helpers in the world. And we know how badly this world needs God's helpers in it, right? Yeah. yeah. I think maybe we need to be some of God's superheroes. And this is what God's helpers do. They love with God's love. They help with God's help. And they teach others what they've learned God. This is good news for us today. Not only can we learn to be God's helpers, but then we can go out into the world and actually be God's helpers. All right? So why don't we have a prayer, and then if you would like to join me at the table, you can do that. I'm glad you want to join me at the table. Let's have a prayer. And this is a, an echo prayer. Do you know what an echo prayer is? I'll, I'll say a line, and you repeat it. I'll say a line and you repeat it. Okay? Dear God, dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Who shows us how to be your helper. Who shows us how to be your helper. By receiving your love and Holy Spirit. By receiving your love and Holy Spirit. So that we can share your love and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. You can go join me at the table. I have to adjust the recording machine, and I'll be right there. Our text for this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I would imagine that the disciples were feeling pretty good just prior to the start of our text. Jesus had come back to life. He had defeated death once and for all. He defied what was humanly possible. And he had been with the disciples for a bit of time now. Jesus ate with them. He taught them more and more. He spent time with them. And I would imagine that the disciples were probably able to feel a little better about themselves, about the poor choices that they made following the Last Supper. Jesus showed them the unconditional love of God, and they were overjoyed. And I bet that they thought that Jesus would be with them forever. That this was just the beginning of a new phase in the life and in the ministry of Jesus and the disciples. Just think about what they could do now. And so they asked Jesus, Lord, at this time, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, in my 2023 translation, okay, Jesus, you have been back with us for a few weeks now. We've so enjoyed seeing you, spending time with you. It has truly been a gift from God. But now, let's do this. Now, let's move. Let's get going. Let us get to the task at hand. Israel needs to be restored. And we need you to act as we have been wanting and waiting. Call down the powers from heaven. Get on your white horse. Put on your purple robe and your gold crown. And let's take them down once and for all. But Jesus was not about that. Jesus knew what his mission was from God, and Jesus continued to be intent on following that mission, on obeying God's word. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so Jesus continues to say, trust me, trust God to the disciples. They are not to concern themselves with the smallest of details. All they are to do is to wait patiently until the Holy Spirit comes down on them. And they are to, then they are to be the witnesses the witnesses Jesus calls them to be. And with that, Jesus is taken up before their very eyes, and they must have been amazed. They must have been at all. They must have wondered, what just happened? And they stood there, looking up into the sky, looking intently, as the text tells us. A cloud had hidden Jesus from their sight, and so, and so they stood there, and they stood there. And they stood there. Until finally two men dressed in white approach. And they say to them, men of Galilee, why are you just standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Jesus will return. Just not yet. And so do not keep looking for him. Trust in what he says. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, stay tuned for that. That's coming next Sunday. You will be filled with this power that Jesus has told you about. And then you shall become witnesses. You shall be the voice of Jesus to the world. You are on the verge of something great, something amazing, something life-changing. And so get ready. What must they have thought? Here Jesus had left them again. Sure, he gave them the same kind of promises that he had given to them before he was crucified. But these promises were different. Yet they were alone again. Had Jesus given them what they needed in order to fulfill 
God's will in the days since he was resurrected? Would they have the courage to, to do just as he is saying here? Or would they hide again? Desert again? Be afraid again? They returned to Jerusalem a day's walk and went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Another upper room, just as they had done on that first Easter Sunday. What would we do if we had been the disciples? What do we do when things are uncertain and no longer comfortable? When we are called and told that we will do great and amazing things as witnesses of Jesus Christ to the world. But these things that will be so great, so amazing are unclear now. We don't know where exactly we will be called, what exactly we'll be, we will be doing. It may be dangerous. It may cause us to do something that we've never done before. We may be called to places that are unknown, uncertain, and scary. Now, for some of us, that may be exactly the, the kick that we need in order to, to re-jumpstart our faith. We're ready for something new. We're ready for something exciting. Even, even if we are called out of our comfort zones. Anybody here feeling like that right now? Anyone feel like being a witness in Jerusalem or Judea or Samaria or to the ends of the earth? Or to Newark? Or New York City? Or Camden? Or rural Idaho? Or right here in Newton? For others, however, the thought of that frightens us. We cannot even think about being called to do something that would stretch us or take us somewhere outside of our box. Things are good just the way they are. We've never done that before, and we don't need to start doing that now. Can't we just leave things the way they are? I am all about being in the comfort zone, believe me. The older I get, the less I like change. I just want to be in a rhythm and a flow and just stay there. But unfortunately, friends, that's not how God operates. And it is all about our perspective. From, from an old mariner's chart drawn in 1525 on display in the British Museum in London, outlining the North American coastline and adjacent waters, the cartographer made some very intriguing notations on areas of the map that represented regions not yet explored. He wrote, here be giants, here be fiery scorpions, and here be dragons. Eventually, the map came into the possession of Sir John Franklin, a British explorer in the early 1800s. Scratching out the fearful inscriptions, he wrote these words across the map. Here is God. Indeed, all about perspective. You are in that wait and see time in the life of your congregation, right? Your beloved Pastor David has retired, and for the first time in probably, what, a decade? You are at that crossroads of discerning what is next for this church. A time of uncertainty, or at least less than clarity. And this pastor search will be different than it was a decade ago. Because things in the church have changed. Certainly the three-year pandemic has changed much of what we have done in the church. Technology, working and worshiping at home. What does outreach even look like in a post-pandemic world? 
How do we connect with those who need the hope of Christ but aren't really interested in church the way that it has been? Bringing hope to people is what we do. Showing others the unconditional love of Christ is how we draw them into the fellowship and the community of the church. Making disciples, growing in our faith, Becoming those witnesses in Newton, and yes, even to the ends of the earth. Through the power and love of God through Jesus Christ. For the disciples and the women, the mother of Jesus and his brothers, they returned to this upper room waiting to see what would happen next. Waiting to see where the Lord was going to call. When the Lord would send his Holy Spirit to fill them. And as they gathered there, as they met in that upper room again, they engaged with one another. They strengthened their bonds with God and with each other. They came together for one purpose. And although the purpose was not in, entirely clear, they readied themselves. To receive that call from God. How did they do that? Well, they all joined together constantly in prayer. Along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They prayed. They sought the Lord and I'm sure asked God to reveal the plan. In the proper time and in the purposed way. They probably prayed for themselves, for strength, for vision, for energy, for strength, again, for courage, for perseverance. They prayed that they might know exactly what would be expected of them. Clifton Black, a New Testament professor at Princeton Seminary, quotes part of John B. Taylor, who was an English bishop and theologian. And he writes, just what is expected of spirit-endowed apostles to be witnesses of Jesus. This is sine qua non for a disciple of this Lord. In spite of its manifold later connotations, its particular expression is not uniform. It entails preaching for some, though not for most. It literally costs the life of some martyrs, though not that of everyone. For all of us, John V. Taylor may have gotten it right. To engage in the mission of God, therefore, is to live this life of prayer. Prayer without ceasing, as St. Paul puts it. That is to say, sustaining a style of life that is focused upon God. This is indeed to engage in the mission of the Holy Spirit by being rather than by doing. To realize that the heart of mission is communion with God in the midst of the world's life will save us from the demented activism of these days. To engage with God, to trust God, to be God's disciple, and to go and make other disciples. Now, I'm sure it is not yet clear where God is calling this church to go, how you are being called to be disciples and to make disciples. But this is how I believe the church is being led. I hope and pray that through your work with Pastor Heather, you are trying to figure out how God is leading you, where God is leading you, where ministry is going in this church. And so during this in-between time, while you are waiting, with some uncertainty, with not as much clarity as maybe you would like, you can pray. Pray for the church. Pray for your session and your deacons and Pastor Heather. Pray for the person that God will choose to be your next pastor. 
Pray that God will lead you toward God's will, and more importantly, that you will be faithful in following, both as individuals and as a church family. And take heed of the words of 1 Peter, because I think it fits in with this idea so well, to humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. And so be prayerful. And be humble. Be at peace and cast all of your worry, all your anxiety about what the future might hold. Give it to God. Grow strong and firm and steadfast in your faith. And above all things, remember that in moving on and moving forward, to God be the power and the glory and the honor, now and always. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the ministry of Jesus. We thank you that the disciples were willing and open to fulfilling your call, especially after Jesus ascended to your right hand. Help us, we pray, to be willing to grow and to stretch ourselves and to venture maybe outside our comfort zones for the sake of the gospel. Guide us to engage in practices which draw us closer to you and which help us to become more faithful disciples. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able. Let us sing together our next hymn. Christ is made the sure foundation.
translating these words from a brief statement of faith as they are printed in your bulletins. Let us say what we believe. In life and death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. We are believers in every time and place. We rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. You will find announcements on the yellow sheet in this morning's um, worship guide. A couple I would like to highlight for you. Um, one that's not in here. First of all, a big thank you to everyone who made donations for the clothing drive. This is a uh, fundraiser for the summer mission trip, youth mission trip. We are going to Woonsocket, Rhode Island in July, and your support is greatly appreciated. Um, if anybody has any availability tomorrow, they will be picking those bags up, and there's about 250 of them out there. And um, unfortunately, the kids going on the mission trip are in school. So if anybody is available, I need about three people to help me carry the bags and load them into the truck when they arrive at 11 a.m. If you're available, see me after worship. I'd also like to highlight the lawn mowing schedule. Um, this is a wonderful ministry. It saves the church a lot of money. So if you have the availability to help mow the lawn at the church, you can sign up in the church parlor. If you have questions about it, you can see our church treasurer, Jane McDonald, after worship. And finally, I'd like to point out, um, there's information about the memorial service for Mary Louise Hutchinson. Um, it is taking place on, uh, I know, June 3rd, which is Saturday. There will have a greeting at, from 1030 to 1130 with the service at 1130 here in the sanctuary. So um, it will be a nice opportunity for us to remember Mary Louise together. Good morning. As you've been hearing over these last few weeks, we are going to be receiving and dedicating our Pentecost offering on Pentecost, which is next week. And of course, the Pentecost offering is one of those four special offerings that we receive churchwide um, over the course of the year. So in advance of that, we have a very brief film in which you will see uh, some of the youth and young adults, which of course this uh, offering supports, that's the focus of this offering. And you'll get a chance to hear how they've benefited from some of the programs that the offering uh, supports. Um, also in your bulletin this morning, you will see a flyer about the Pentecost offering. And as you read through it, you'll also see that 40% of this offering stays with us in this congregation. And so the mission committee has been discerning how we would uh, donate that portion. And they chose the Pass It Along program. Perhaps some of you are familiar with it. Uh, it's here in the county and it supports teenagers and helps them to develop leadership qualities by volunteering for different organizations within the county. So that's how we will be donating our portion at this time. Also, you'll see an envelope, so we invite you to give as you are able, remembering that even though you can only just give a little, it really does add up to a lot. Thank you. I think that young adults are often searching and often trying to find things that they can do, places they can be, people they can meet that 
will change them, that will shape them, and it's not always easy to find. Just to be around people your age or around your, your life experiences is just something that's really powerful. The value you get from building relationships cross-culturally is just immense and really powerful and really life-changing. If Triennium changed the way we look at the world, then it will change the way we act in the world. And if we each act differently in the world, then the world will be better because our part in it will be different. I'm extremely passionate about the Pentecost offering. The Pentecost offering is a big deal to me because um, I, that also funds the Young Adult Volunteer Program, that funds Triennium. I was a, a part of the Young Adult Volunteer Program and that completely changed my life and I, that had such an impact on me and what I'm doing now, working out at church, uh, which I never thought I would do. and. Um, I can only imagine how some of these other programs have an impact on others. When we give our gifts to God and for the work of God's people, we are proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. So let us share that good news as we present our gifts and our offerings this morning. which gives more than we ask or imagine, grace these gifts for the work of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. As we prepare to go to God in prayer this morning, just some new prayer requests for our prayer list for today and for this week. Please keep in your prayers, Jenna and family, as uh, they grieve this baby who was still born on May 11th. For Carol with stage four pancreatic cancer, for Linda with lung cancer, for Tara having the filter removed Monday and still full of joy for continued healing and hope. Let us take these and those prayer requests and joys that you have on your hearts this morning to God in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Jesus who brought hope to the distressed, 
promise to the despairing and healing to the afflicted. In him there is the gift of life eternal to all who believe. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who calls us to labor. As Christ is the vine, you name us the branches and send us forth to bear much fruit. We ask this day that you would let love lead us to be more forgiving and add to love the discipline to be a reconciling force in your world. When enemies taunt us, assure us of your presence as we seek patience and inner strength. Amid tensions caused by misunderstanding or suspicion or lack of trust, send your spirit of insight and hope. Help us to make the first move toward those we have offended, forsaking our pride and seeking peace. Let love lead us to be more daring. Give us the boldness to speak out on behalf of the voiceless. Let us not be afraid to venture into dark places or into situations in which we are not in control. Fill us with that confidence that you will never desert us and the assurance that what we do is in accord with your will. Keep us from becoming frustrated by the many faces of evil and set our sights on those injustices that we can overcome. Let love lead us to be more trusting. Give us the faith to make Christ supreme in our lives. Help us to translate our words of confession into acts of compassion, our desire to be faithful into deeds of obedience. Your love does indeed work wonders. Work now in us so that others may behold your love. Lord, we thank you for the gift of prayer and for this opportunity to lift up those who are on our minds and our hearts this day. Lord, we thank you that this is a praying church. And we just ask that you continue to sustain all of these people who are on this list and give them what they need. Specifically this week, we ask prayers for Jenna and for her family, for Carol, for Linda, and for Tara. For those whose names have not been mentioned, but those who are on our hearts this day, who are in need of your love and your grace, your presence and your peace. Lord, we ask you to hear all of our prayers that are being made today in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us each one to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
to love and to serve the Lord. When you find yourselves in the crossroads of life, seek the company and security and safety of others who can support you and encourage you. When you find yourself in the crossroads of life, pray and pray and pray again. And when you find yourselves in those crossroads, know that God is with you and the Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you. And Jesus' presence will sustain you today and in all the seasons of our lives. Amen. Amen. Amen.